somebody to talk to, so I called. And um, the situation is this. I'm a black female, and I'm dating a white guy. And my parents really don't approve, <laughs> okay? They just really don't like it at all. As a matter of fact, they, well, not really ordered me not to see him, but they just really don't want me to see him. They're very, you know, disappointed and everything like that. And they are supporting me, supporting my education. I'm a 20-year-old senior business major. And, uh, you know, I could, you know, live with that. I know, you know, parents, sometimes it takes them a while to get used to things. But the problem is, is that I'm pregnant. And my girlfriends are telling me to get an abortion and stuff like that. And I really don't believe in it. And when my parents find out, they're going to just really hit the wall. And I'm just so, I mean, I'm grown, kind of, you know, I'm 20, but I'm just so afraid. And I don't believe in abortion. And the guy, he wants us to get married, but I'm not ready for marriage. And I don't think a 20 you are either. <sighs> but you're not ready for motherhood either. No, I'm not, but Sometimes I don't believe in abortion well, either. Well, I understand. Well, first of all, concerning your parents, you're, you're probably right when you tell them they're going to be angry for, I don't know, 15 minutes or, or two days or whatever it is. But you've got to understand and you've got to have a little bit of faith in them. You are their child. You will always be their child. And there's damned little that you can do that will ever destroy their love for you. They might get angry with you, but there's nothing that you can really do that will destroy that love. And even though they will vent a little steam in all probability, it shouldn't take them too long before they start to calm down and say, hey, you know, look, we're all on this boat together. We've got to do what is absolutely best. Well, what happened? After I have the baby and the daddy comes by to visit, you know, we're hoping that we'll still be seeing each other. It's mm -hmm. going to be more then. So then now, how are they going to react? They just really don't like the idea. They just, they didn't even give him why a chance as a person. You well, know? why don't they like the idea? What reason do they give to you? Because they don't believe it's real. We're just experimenting because it's the, the, the curiosity of the different races and things like that. They don't believe it's real and it could last. They went through a time when there was a lot of prejudice and bigotry, and I Still guess is. they haven't forgiven or forgotten. Mm -hmm. so. Well, you know, the, as, as much as I hate to admit it, there's a great deal of truth in what they say. It is interracial marriages, interracial relationships are very difficult to deal with. It puts an extra added burden on a relationship, and a relationship is tough enough as it is. It, it takes two very, very strong individuals to live in a world where people stick their noses into things that, that really aren't any of their business. And your parents want you to have the easiest time in life that you can possibly have. You've got to understand that. That's, that's what they brought you into the world for. But we love each other. We really do. I mean, he's my best friend. and we. It's, it's, I, I believe it's real. I know they know more than I do, but I feel that I'm somewhat of an adult. You know, I don't understand it. Well, you are, and you're going to become an adult a hell of a lot faster than you had planned on I know, to. so they need to try to make things, well, they don't need to try to make things a little bit easier, but I don't need any added stress and pressures from them. Not at all. What you've got to do, and this isn't going to be easy, but it's, it's the best advice I can give you. And, you know, I've been around for 43 years, which is starting, you know, to be a lot of years, and I've been to the county fair even twice now. <laughs> what you've got to do is not worry about, well, you know, when the daddy wants to come by and visit after the baby is born. You've got to take this day by day. There are a couple of things that you have to do. First of all, you have disappointed your parents, okay? And mm -hmm. you have to understand that you've disappointed them. You have, in essence, disappointed society. You've done what you're not supposed to do. But that's okay. We'll pick up from where we are. You've got to prove to your parents, reprove to your parents, that they, uh, that you are willing, or not willing, that you are deserving of their respect and trust. You've, okay. You know, you've got to reprove that to them. But you've also got to prove to them that you love them. You have to prove to them that you do respect them, and that even though a quote-unquote mistake has been made, and I do put that word in quote, right. that uh, you are prepared to do whatever you have to do to make it it at whole for all parties concerned to provide the best possible care for that new little baby that's going to be coming along and you're going to have to say to your parents again on a day-by-day -day basis trust me on this one maybe i'm making a mistake maybe i'm not making a mistake but trust me on this one with the baby trust me on this one with with the guy with the father involved here uh i'm confused i'm scared i don't know what's going to happen i can understand your anger 
let's see if we can't, you know, rather than just be mad at each other, let's see if we can't work it out day by day. Okay. That's, that's the best advice I could give you. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate talking I with you. Like I said, I didn't have anywhere else to go. I so maybe I'll sense. tell them tonight. I don't know. I have to get enough courage. Well, the sooner you tell them, the better. You know, don't go rushing into it because you've got to be real careful with your words now. You have to, uh, you have to convey love and, and understanding and uh, ask for the same in return. As You know, you've got to let them know that you, you are aware of the fact you have disappointed them, but... You know, we still have we still have to go on with life here, and this is a family, and we have to keep it a family. So let's work it out. Okay, Bob. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very okay. Much. Bye. 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 In the news at six, efforts to keep the peace in Tarpon Springs. WFLA. Oh, hello, Bob. Hi. Uh, there are a couple of questions. I was wondering why you didn't ask the young lady who was just on the phone yeah, about like her what? pregnancy. Yeah. Well, one, as a twenty-year-old, I assume college student she said she was taking a financial course mm -hmm. didn't she ever hear of the word condom i don't know ma'am number difference one does, what difference does it make she's already well, pregnant it, it does make a lot of difference that well, makes a difference the next time ma'am but right now her problem is that she's pregnant i hope there's never a next time she would be terribly I mean, stupid to be did, putting did, did you ever did you ever did you ever call up a farmer you know after he'd lost his horse and suggest <laughs> to him that he locked his barn door these things are being broadcast everywhere. If they don't hear that word once, they hear it a million times everywhere. Secondly, I don't think she has the right to assume that her parents are going to bring up that child. She says when he comes by after the baby is born, is she going to do anything about contributing toward the support of this child? Is I don't he know, going to Why do anything? Yeah. What, what, you were, what you were you constantly nose, keeping her in the present. She's got a lot to think about. What and I think is it off of your nose, madam? Who the it's hell a lot of skin off my nose because I know that if my daughter brought home holier than you, Don Tootin, you evaded you evaded the most. Don't listen to somebody else's troubles on the talk radio station, for God's sake. Who the hell are you? We're water. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Welcome, Bob. Welcome to my world. Anything else uh, aside from that clear water? Well, I just wanted to say I'm very unhappy that you no longer have me on your station. Oh, what's that supposed to mean, Claire? Well, I understand our contract ran out, and I just had wanted to call you and just say that you are always one of my favorite talk show hosts. Uh -huh. well, what, what contract, Claire? Well, you know, the contract for us and TalkNet, or for TalkNet and your station. Oh, I see. You're supposed to be Bruce Williams. And I just wanted okay. to call up and say welcome to my world. Okay. Uh, off it is not a tap, but you're on the other side. Ah, pity poo, pity, pity, pity poo. That does smart. But there's always Largo. Larg, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Bob, I heard the end of your uh, talk with a young woman who's pregnant. That was just so feeling and so caring on your part. Thank you. Well, it's best advice I know how to give, you know. Well, I mean, I thought it was great. I'm way beyond the stage of being pregnant, but I, I just thought the way you handled it was just so feeling. I like you, and I don't like you, you know, but this was a great show. Thank you very much. Bye. It's okay. Some days, lady, I like myself, and some days I don't like myself either. So, you know, I know where you're coming from. 990-9352 in Hillsboro. 461-9352 in the other place. Clear water, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Bob, you know, Bob, that young lady that was pregnant? No, I don't know well, about it. the lady that was talking about she is pregnant now? Yeah, yeah. That's the same one that always calls you and says that she loves you, Bob. Uh, no, it isn't. Yeah, she, I know her voice, Bob. That was uh, her. Well, I know. I'm sorry, uh, young, young person there. It wasn't the same one. Well, Bob, I hope someday, Bob, you know that she, that was her, Bob. Uh, well, if you say so, I, I, you know, what the hell, I don't care. Oh, you fool! It is such a remarkable world that we live in. In the last 15 minutes, we had a young woman call who was pregnant, and we talked with her, and then almost immediately after that, we had a bitter old woman, old woman call who was going to stick her nose into somebody else's life, somebody's life that she knows utterly nothing about, someone that she knows utterly nothing about, and then we have a young white bigot who, again, is going to jump in on somebody else's tragedy with his own demented, warped sense of humor and try to make some kind of connection, some type of warped connection between the caller and myself 
Again, not knowing anything at all, because you see, none of this is real to you people. That's the whole damn problem. This, you people don't live in a real world. It's just a world of voices on the telephone, voices on the radio, little images on the, on the picture screen in your living room or the big screen down there at the movie theater. You live in a world that isn't real. Ah, uh, there will be more reality, like it or not, tomorrow at 3 o'clock. See you then.